my friends, and welcome back to another episode of MTD North America. Today I have the great pleasure to thaw out in Arizona at Methods Machine Tools. I've been traveling around the country and there's been a lot of snow, but I get to spend time now with superstar Cody of Methods Machine Tools traveling the country, and we are working on the thinking man here in Arizona on this beautiful Yaza machine. Indeed. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So you are the expert, and we have a large audience that wants to learn more about the Yaza machine, the precision, what you're creating, the tooling you use. How do you get from raw block of bronze or aluminum to this finished product? What you have behind you, behind me, these, this great, cool thinking man you have here. So let's learn a little bit about the Yaza, the precision of the Yaza, the programming behind it. So we chose the Yaza because of its uh, precision and tolerance. It makes our lives easy when it comes to the five axis with the G68.2 that comes with it. So we don't have to think about how, how we're fixturing, is it on center, is it not on center. And then when it comes to the precision, when we're dialing our tools in, it just makes it that much easier. I can adjust it by a tenth or a millionth, and it actually moves that tenth or millionth. It's not kind of fluctuating between that. It's got sensors on the Y and on the head, so when that it runs for 80 hours doing this thinking, man, that thermal comp happens and it's truly comping it, which is the nice part. I don't have, I don't run it for three hours, come back and be like, oh, I gotta adjust my tool a couple tenths down now because of that thermal growth. It takes care of all that. So it just makes my life and anybody else's life super easy, which, which is handy. Well, I'm glad that you bring that up because in the world we live in, temperatures change. I mean, obviously we're in Arizona, another branch of methods is in Michigan and Chicago and Northern California and Boston. So we always are playing with that, that thermal compensation, right? So you're Absolutely. telling me this Yazda machine does it while machining. Yes, yeah, I, uh, I ran another Yazda, another company before they had AC in a building. And it was, it was 120 degrees outside and it was 130 inside that building. The machine was 70 degrees inside of it. I was plastered against the window just to keep myself cool. <laughs> and my parts inside the machine came out gorgeous. Now, of course, I pulled them out, set them on a table, and I had thermal growth just from the metal. But inside the machine, the machine took care of everything. Now, give or take, that temperature, I don't recommend by any means. I wasn't holding super tight tolerances. But it still made my life easier to where I knew if I checked it in the machine, golden. Took it out, well, that's a different story, right? So it did. they just make a machinist's life, a, a programmer's life, everybody's life a lot easier. Well, I've had the great pleasure of going to your precision center in Acton, Massachusetts, where the temperature only varies by a small yeah. degree, right? So 120, 130 degrees. Um, we know that the Yazda has incredible precision. It's known for its precision, right? Its repeatability, whether it be a pallet change or repeating on the pallet or the part that's being machined from tool change to tool change. There's a reason why the Yazda doesn't jam tools up into that right. machine spindle as hard as a lot of the other machines is because this accuracy is incredibly important and that's what Yazda is known for. Absolutely, yeah. They, the precision, and some people do complain about the speed of it, but there's a reason, right? They're not moving super fast because they're holding those tolerances. So instead of doing, you know, 600 inches a minute in a rapid, it might only be doing 300 inches a minute in a rapid, but there's a reason for it, right? It's slowly adjusting, it's thermal comping everything. It's nice is it doesn't need to be home. If, it, if you at E-Stop, you can take off and go. If it's flashing at you that it needs to be home, you kind of hit it, it'll sit there and just kind of go through its grids. Once it knows where it's at, it's like, I'm good. No reason to send me home, I know where I'm at. It, it, it knows where it's at, it knows its tolerances, and it just wants to run. It wants to make you money. That's the best part about them. Right, well, you are absolutely the expert, and I'm here learning just like the rest of our viewers here. But I would make the discussion that having a little bit slower of a tool chain, but if I have 30 parts coming off a machine and I only have to check one of them, and the overall cycle time of my life I have less downtime on touching, on checking all my parts versus that four or five seconds on my tool change. Absolutely. And then that's what we say, especially if you get a pallet changer with one of these, you check that last part. If it's good, I promise you all the ones in front of it are gold. You don't even have to worry about it. You add a probe to it and let it do its comps for you, well, you just made yourself all kinds of money. Just sitting there printing money. We ran, I ran 400 parts holding two tenths tolerances. I lost three out of 400 parts. That was it. And that's because my tool was wearing out and all of a sudden I had more tool pressure on the next cut. Other than that, the machine cuts it. You tell it to do it, it's going to do it. Talk a little bit about this thinking man. So where did the idea come from? What software are you using to create it? So when I came with the company, they wanted to, to do something fancy, a trophy, and thinking man was where they came from. They thought about it, they're like, hey, this is what we want to do. Uh, then we decided to make it out of bronze, make it a little bit harder for us to cut than aluminum. So we reached out to Mastercam. They said they'd t team up with us. So Mastercam used their Mastercam 2022 software to program it, and it allowed it What's coming up in the future, which is nice, it'll pick the angles the best to rough it out. So you don't have to sit there and choose 90 degrees, 90. 
it looks at it and goes, oh, 13 degrees here is better. So then it just does it. So we use that feature to kind of rough it out. And we've, I've been using Mastercam for 14 years. They've been great to us here at Methods. Uh, we tag team up with them a lot. They pretty much programmed 99% of this. I've just tweaked little things here and there that we didn't like. Feed and speeds we pulled from our OSG partner. They partnered some of us on tooling, gave us some tooling ideas. We took their feed and speeds that they gave us, tweaked them very, very minute, and we kind of ran with it. The only thing we changed was we went, we're thinking about a 20,000 RPM spindle, we went to the 24 instead just to kind of reduce the cycle time. So it wasn't 120 hours, we got it down to 80. This thing runs for 80 hours straight, nonstop, 24K. And we're not having any issues running at max RPM the whole time. <laughs> not at all. So nice part about the Yaz is since those thermal uh, sensors are going off, if I, I come in from the weekend and it sat all weekend. I hit the go button, the machine goes, well, you got to give me a second. I'm not up to temperature. It'll literally stop, pause itself, warm itself up till it gets up to temperature and then continue running. You don't have to go to a separate program. You don't do any of that stuff. It just does it for you. You walk away, go to lunch, and it sat for an hour. You might at cycle start go, hey, give me five minutes before it. It just knows. I need a couple minutes here. It's throwing that old oil out of the bearing, getting the new oil in, heating it up to temp, and then running. To me, Cody, that's pretty informative. And the reason I say that is because whether it's my education or miseducation, when I buy a spindle or if I buy a machine, and they say, okay, max RPM is 24,000 RPM, but your sweet spot's going to be about 20 to 22. They'll actually advise most people to reduce that RPM. By two grand? Yeah, by two yeah. grand, which is kind of important when we get into those small diameter tools. And you're saying we're running at 24K the whole time? The whole time. And then that's the nice part about Yaz is they, they take pride in their work and the, the spindles take it. I, I, this is the fifth one I've done, literally just sitting there running. So talking 10 weeks, 24K, nonstop. 80 hours times five? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just nonstop pumping, pumping, pumping. That's yeah. incredible. So, We've talked a little bit about where the programming came from. Are you using any special tooling or work holding to go along with it as well? So we teamed up with Fifth, uh, Fifth Axis Work Holding. They gave us their rock lock system to hold it down. So the first prep op, we drill, uh, drill and tap four holes. It allows us to put some studs down and we flip it over and we just hold in those studs and that allows us to get to all four or five sides that we need to get to. Clearance, no clearance issues and stuff like that. Well, I bring that up and I'm happy you brought up Fifth Axis because we're talking about the precision of the Yazda, which everyone knows. So the work holding has to also be as Absolutely. precise. So that's, you know, kudos to those guys for being able to provide that type of work holding. Yeah, no, they were great. Uh, when it comes to tools, like I said, we, we partnered up with OSG. They reached out and said they're, they're willing to do the, uh, cut bronze and work with us on the feet, some feeds and speeds. And then for the holders, we went with Heimer holders. Uh, their, their precision on their, their shrink fits was well within my spec for the Yazda in this part. And again, they, they, they reached out to us. Said, yeah, let's partner up, let's knock this out. And they've been great. All the partners have been great with this. Yeah, well, Heimer's incredible. I was just there doing some filming with Brent and awesome. learned a whole lot about their shrink fit systems and how they can support the industry. OSG is a great tool. And I mean, everyone's machining bronze, right? So, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> there's definitely a go-to tool for yeah, bronze. Ex and that's our, that was our biggest problem is they send us a tool like, hey, try it, try these feeds and speeds. And it always, right, they always get you in the ballpark. And then it take, kind of takes you messing with it. But they were amazing, like, hey, this two flute didn't work. You want to try to send me a four? It's a little harder, a little denser than we thought. And the, the bronze, when you cut it, it's loud. It, it makes some noise compared to a lot of other metals I've cut. Cody, you know, we keep talking about the accuracy of the Yazda, and Yazda is known for the accuracy and precision, but what is the actual accuracy of this Yazda machine? So we measured, before we started cutting the thinking man, we measured the B axis at one arc second and the C at point one arc second. So you're at, sorry, point five one arc seconds or half an arc second, which is insane, absolutely insane. I think most machines are sitting around the 6 to 10, so yeah, it's insane. You were machining the Mandalorian helmet with Beskar, right? Yeah, you got it. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's plenty of that going around. So Mandalorian helmet, Incredible Hulk, we're doing the thinking, man. You have a couple projects coming, I think you already mentioned the Black Panther helmet and yep. Thor's hammer as we're well. We're doing Thor's hammer, yep. Holy cow. Yep. Should cow. be a good time. Yeah, we're having, we're having a lot of fun this year with demos. <laughs> Cody, well thank you so much for sharing how this Yazda works, the project that you're working on right now. Your personality is fantastic. You've conveyed a powerful message, I believe, to our viewers. So thank you for sharing that with MTD North America. Anytime. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys.